All right, lesson one, two, finding limits graphically and numerically. And you should have the worksheet to accompany this video as well. So the definition, not the formal mathematical definition, but a definition for limits. If f of x, if a function becomes arbitrarily close to a single number l, as x approaches c from either side, then the limit of the function as x approaches c is l. And everybody has studied limits before. So what's our notation? The limit as x approaches c of a given function, if that limit exists, we call it l. So a few things about limits that I wanna reiterate. First and foremost, limits are y values. And that's a very important understanding. So as a function, f of x represents y, becomes arbitrarily close to a single number l. So limits are y values. Secondly, limits are approach statements. And this is a very important understanding. Okay, and you'll see that in later in videos and in problems that we do. So if we break down our definition as x approaches some value c, okay, it's a y value. That with the limit exists, that value of l is a y value. Thirdly, limits are unique, meaning only one limit can exist. And lastly, limits are finite. Okay, so they have to approach a real number. Okay, so let's look at some examples. Evaluating limits, one of three ways. A numerical approach, we'll look at this and it's used the least because a lot of what we do, well, all of what we do at the beginning is non-calculator. So the numerical approach, construct a table of values. Graphical approach, draw a graph by hand or by using technology. And there are certain graphs that you are responsible for understanding the parent function, translations, stretches and shrinks, but we'll look at a lot of different graphs. And then the analytical approach, that's algebra or calculus. That's what starts in lesson one, three. So we're really just focusing on numerical and graphical in this video. Sketch a graph to determine the limit as x approaches three. Okay, so the limit as x approaches three of my function, we're trying to determine what that limit is. Okay, so let's recall this is a piecewise function, okay? And a piecewise function, as it says, is defined in pieces. So I'm gonna have a linear function at y equals x everywhere except where x is equal to three. And then I'm gonna have a horizontal line at y is equal to one, or excuse me, not right at all. When x equals three, my y value will equal one. So graphically, this is just going to be the point 3 comma 1. Everywhere else, my graph is going to be the line y is equal to x. Now, when I graph piecewise functions, I always look at where the domain is switching. So when x is equal to 3, according to this function, y should equal 3. But the domain tells us that x can equal 3. So that's going to be an open circle at 3, 3. So let's start with the line. So three, three, I'm gonna have an open circle. The graph otherwise is just a line with a slope of positive one. So my y-intercept is zero. So there's a graph of x, where x cannot equal three. And then to finish the function, three comma one, I put my closed circle. Okay, so now as x is approaching three, and remember what the definition states, as the function becomes arbitrarily close to a single number, as x approaches that number from either side. So if I think about, here's x is equal to three. I'm gonna do that in a different color. So here's where x is equal to three. As my function approaches three and gets closer and closer and closer to that, what are my y values approaching? My y values are approaching three. So the limit of the function is 3. The value of the function, however, if I were to ask you what's f of 3, that's equal to 1. Okay, and that's the importance of the approach statement. 
okay? It's a Y value. My Y values are approaching three, but it doesn't have to necessarily equal what the value of the function is. All right, use the table of values. Now I said usually we could use a calculator, but on an example like this, you won't need to. Limit as X approaches zero. So again, back to the definition. I'm gonna get arbitrarily close to zero on either side of zero. So that means I'm gonna pick values greater than zero. That would be as X approaches zero from the right hand side. And then I'm gonna pick values less than zero. That would be values as X approaches zero from the left hand side of zero. Okay, so if I think of, here's my function, negative X divided by absolute value of X. So I'm just gonna do the one because students have a tendency to look at these decimals and they're like, oh my goodness, how do I do this? I'm taking the opposite of my input value, so that would make it positive. And then what does the absolute value do? The absolute value makes any negative number positive and keeps positive numbers positive. So what does that simplify to? It just simplifies to positive one. And that pattern's gonna remain for all my x values from the left of zero. That'll be positive one, because I'm taking that negative number and making it positive, and I'm dividing it by itself. So that would be positive one. So let's think about as I approach where my values are to the right of zero. I take the opposite of my input value, and then I divide it by its positive self. So what are all my y values going to approach from the right hand side? No matter my input, my output's always gonna be negative one. So looking at this table of values, what does my function approach? Well, from the right hand side, my y values are approaching negative one, but from the left hand side, my y values are approaching positive one. So what is the limit? The limit does not exist. And that's the condition where the limit has to be unique meaning it can approach one y value on one side of my x value that I'm looking at, in this, in this case zero, and approach a different value on the other side of zero. Okay, for this, now I'm looking at the graph, limit as x approaches four of this function. Okay, so here's x is equal to four. So I'm gonna get arbitrarily close to x is equal to four on either side. So four from the right, what are your y values doing? Your y values are decreasing to no end. To the left of four, what are your y values doing? Again, they're decreasing and not approaching a finite value. So we would say that this limit also does not exist. Now, just as to look ahead, we do look at one-sided limits a little bit later in the chapter. And if I'm just looking at values, let's say to the right-hand side of four, so on the right-hand side of four, the behavior of the function is that it's approaching negative infinity. And that will be important when we graph and we get a formal definition of what our asymptotes are. But for right now, if I asked you what's the limit as x approaches 4, the limit does not exist. The limit has to be a finite value. Okay, limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of 1 over x. So again, this has a tendency to make students get a little crazy, like you think you need a calculator. Sine of 1 over 2 over pi. Well, what is this function? One over x is just your reciprocal function. So this is really asking you for the sine of pi over two. Sine of pi over two, positive one. So two over three pi, that's really asking you for the sine of three pi over two. And what's the sine of three pi over two? two? Pi over two is up here, three pi over two down there, sine is negative one. What's the reciprocal of two over five pi? That would be the sine of five pi over two. So I'm back here at positive pi over two. So my y value would be positive one. And we keep alternating between positive one and negative one. So the limit as x approaches zero, hopefully you're saying, okay, well that can exist. 
And what this behavior is called, and it's important graphically, and if you want to, plug this graph into your calculator so you can see what it looks like. Your Y values are oscillating between two different values. So it goes back to that limit needing to be a unique number. And again, plug that in your calculator, make sure your mode is in radians, and check out what the graph is doing as X gets closer and closer to zero. Okay, so to sum it up, these are what all our examples showed for us. The existence or non-existence of a function at X is equal to C has no impact on the existence or value of the limit as x approaches c. Huh? f of c, the y value of the function, does not necessarily have to equal the limit as x approaches c of the function. That's the first example we saw, okay, the piecewise function. Limits are unique. They must approach the same finite value l from both sides of c. And lastly, a limit is finite. Infinity is a concept, and therefore, infinite limits do not exist. Okay, so again, those the four examples that I showed you are um, examples of each of these three notes. Okay, that'll do it for the video.